Volley Ride is one of the best things to happen to volleyball, and here's why. First off, Volley Ride makes entering scoring information fast and easy. Secondly, it helps you do your job by alerting you to your responsibilities, by checking the legality of what you enter, and by walking you through the various scored actions on the court, like penalties and exceptional subs. And thirdly, it includes Libro tracking. VolleyRide opens on the Welcome tab. The basic steps to use the program are outlined in the graphics in the center of the screen, and the tabs across the top are listed in their approximate order of use. Notice the Load Last Match button. If your computer gets hit by a ball and reboots, or if your outlet wasn't live power so your battery dies, when you get the computer running, click the Load Last Match button to pick up where you left off. Also, help files are built into the software. Click on the round question mark button in the top right corner of each tab to see the user help file for that tab. Because VolleyRite scores all levels of volleyball, it comes with predefined rule sets. To select the rule set you want to use, click or touch the Open button. If you don't have a touch screen, I do recommend using a mouse. If you're scoring high school matches, use the NFHS rule set for varsity matches and the NFHS non-varsity rule set for freshman and JV matches. The difference between these two is the format of three versus five sets and the points in the deciding set, which is 15 for varsity matches. You can also set a default so that when you open the program for the first match of the day, the correct rules are automatically loaded into VolleyWrite. If you need to make a change to a rule set, for example, if you have a middle school that doesn't allow a Libero, you can change one of the rule sets provided and then save it to a unique name for future use. On the Match tab, enter the header information for the score sheets. Although this information is not required for VolleyRite to score your match, it should be filled out. The date field defaults to today. And the other fields vary with the score sheet you're using, but remember to include the names of the officials. Don't be afraid to ask their names, especially the R2, so you can call to him or her by their first name if a problem should arise. You do not have to fill in the first field. If you leave it blank, VolleyRite will assign a match file name in the format of Team 1 versus Team 2, followed by a date and time stamp. You can enter a match file name if you want to use your own naming convention, but most people leave it blank. On the Rosters tab, you tell VolleyRite who's playing. You only need team names and player numbers. Names are optional. To enter a roster, first enter the team name. Then, after you enter a number, hit the tab button twice to get to the next number field. That way, it only takes about 10 seconds to enter a roster, especially if the Libro tracker reads the numbers off. You do not have to enter the players in numeric order. VolleyRite will sort them if you save the roster. It will ignore blanks, and it will not allow a duplicate number. You can save the roster for future use with the Save button. Usually teams enter their own rosters with numbers and names and save them, and then all they have to do is use the Open button before each match. Remember to add a tag to the team name if you have multiple teams for an organization, like a freshman, JV, and varsity, so none get overwritten. Check the rosters you enter. Although it's easy to add a player during a set, it's always best to start with the correct players already entered. Remove the check mark in the present column for any player who will not participate. That way, VolleyRite can help you repopulate the court when you use the Injury button. Next, we go to the Set tab and click the Start button. This loads the rules and teams into the heart of the program, and now VolleyRite will track any changes to the rules and rosters. If the sides the teams occupy on the court are different than what they are on this display, use the Change Courts button so that the display matches the court. When the R2 shares the results of the pregame conference, enter the team with the first serve using the radio buttons at the top of the screen. Once the first serve is entered, 
the screen changes to lineup diagrams, which should match what the coaches submit. If they do not match, you should involve the R2. It may just be that you open the wrong rule set. Notice that I can still change who has first serve and the sides the teams are on. So don't worry about making a mistake at this point. Under each diagram is the team bench containing all the players that are marked present on the rosters tab. There's a separate video about lineup entry, but I like to use the auto button and have my tracker read the lineup so I can just click the numbers on the bench. If I make a mistake at any point, I can use the undo button and volley right erases the last action. If the rules indicate that volley right should track the floor captain, you'll have to enter the captains using the drop down boxes provided. Coaches indicate this on the lineups with a small C next to one of the player numbers. You have the option of entering the alternate if the coach specifies one, but when the libero is the floor captain, an alternate must be entered. Once all the information has been entered, the Accept button appears. When you accept the lineups, the screen changes to display the court as if you were hanging from the ceiling. The white line represents the net, and each side of the court has six player positions. Each team's bench is below their side of the court, and each team may have zero, one, or two Libro boxes, depending on the rules. You can wait to accept the lineups in case a change is made, but if you accept earlier, you can always use the undo button to get back to the lineup diagrams. If a Libro box is empty, when you accept the lineups, VolleyRite confirms that the team is not playing with a Libero. This is especially important at the beginning of the first set of the match in USA Volleyball and FIVB because it affects Libero use for all sets in the match. When the R2 checks the court, make sure the lineup on the screen matches the court. It's easier to address a problem now than after play has begun. For each side of the net, after the players are confirmed, the R2 allows the Libro to enter the court. You enter a Libro replacement by clicking on both player numbers involved, regardless of the order. And there's more information about this coming up. For each serve, check that the correct player contacts the ball and answer the question in the server verification bubble. Making sure that the correct player serves is a key responsibility for a scorer who is in charge of preserving the service order. If the wrong player serves, when they contact the ball, alert the R2, and then VolleyRite will walk you through the consequence if necessary. Award rally points using the buttons below the scores. There is built-in debounce, so don't worry about accidentally double-clicking and awarding two points for the same rally. Enter substitutions by clicking on both players involved. This can be done in any order, bench to court or court to bench. However, if you select a player on the bench who's already been on the court, VolleyRite shows you where they can go by highlighting that service position with a yellow circle. After each normal substitution, the sub count at the bottom of the screen changes. If you substitute into the service position, the server verification bubble reflects that change immediately. When a substitution is illegal, VolleyRite alerts you immediately, so get the R2's attention right away. Because VolleyRite checks if a sub is legal, always make sure you enter the sub before indicating to the R2 that you're ready. If you need to enter a substitution and the player number is not on the bench, first inform the R2 to hold a play, then check the roster to see if you made a mistake. Use a Change Jersey button if you entered a number incorrectly, or use an Add Player button if you missed one. But under NFHS rules, a penalty point may be charged for an inaccurate roster. So VolleyRide gives you that option, and you need to involve the R2. The most straightforward way to enter a Libro replacement is by clicking on the Libro in the Libro box, then clicking on a player in the back row. The replaced player is listed in that position on the court. 
and they're now in the replacement box, not on the bench. When the Libro rotates to the front row, Volleyrite moves the Libro off the court into a Libro box, and a yellow verification bubble appears to remind you to check the exchange. This is an important responsibility of a Libro tracker. And if the wrong player enters the court for the Libro, alert the R2 immediately. You'll notice that there are times when two non-Libro players go through the replacement zone during a dead ball, instead of a Libro and a non-Libro player. This is called a double Libro replacement, and it occurs when the Libro can legally serve for the player in the service position. Enter a double Libro replacement in two steps that don't have to occur in any specific order. You have to verify that the correct player entered the court so you can answer the verification bubble, and you have to move the Libro from the Libro box into the green service position. You'll also notice that when a Libro serves, that service position is marked with a small blue triangle as a reminder. If you enter a Libro replacement when the Libro has not been off the court for a completed rally, or has served in a different service position, VolleyWrite will alert you. So get the R2's attention immediately. The dialog will then help you with the consequence to get the match back in progress. And finally, you can enter substitutions when they occur. You don't need to enter a Libro exchange first. When the R2 acknowledges a timeout request, click the appropriate timeout button. VolleyWrite shows a backup timer and possibly Libro information to share with the R2. You can go to other tabs while the timer is running but at any point you can close the timer using the X in the top right corner of the window. Most of the information entered during a match includes points, substitutions, Libro replacements, and timeouts, and an occasional undo. But if there are penalties and sanctions or injuries, use the buttons on the left side of the screen. There's a button there for reserves and high school scoring, and replays which are recorded in both high school and college. During a set, VolleyWrite has pop-ups to alert you to share information with the R2, such as a team's last four substitutions, set point, and switch point for deciding sets. At the end of each set, if you need to verify the score sheet, when you use high school rules, get the R2's permission to enter their initials or let them enter their initials themselves. For college matches, enter your name if no one protests or challenges the last point. Before a deciding set, the end of set dialog has a section to indicate which team will be serving first and whether the teams will be changing courts. When you go on to the next set, the last lineup button loads the starting players from the previous set, which may save you some time at higher level matches. Sometimes you just have to rotate the starting lineup using one of the rotate buttons. At the end of the match, the appropriate people must sign the score sheet, and VolleyWrite forces you to save the match. You can enter a name or just use the naming convention that VolleyWrite creates, Team 1 versus Team 2 followed by a date time stamp. If you choose to stay with the current match, you can then go to the score sheet tab and generate the score sheet PDF to print, save, or email it to your analytics vendor. I used to bring a portable printer, but now I just copy the PDF to the SID's memory stick. Then to start a new match, go to the match tab and use the clear button, then use the tabs across the top starting with the rules tab. Check out our other YouTube videos to learn more about the tricks of the trade, especially predictive assistance. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please contact us at info at